Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning. You just heard the theme song for our upcoming stewardship, One Voice. And you'll be hearing more and more about One Voice as we merge together over the next couple of weeks. It is wonderful to have all of you here this morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Pastor Carol Gates, and we welcome you to Lamb of God Lutheran Episcopal Church in Fort Myers, Florida. Bear with me, I have a number of announcements, which is all wonderful, really. So, on Wednesday of this week, it is FK Your Diet Food Truck. And again, if you don't know what it means, don't assume you do. Please, it's called Foster Kids Your Diet. And the proceeds go to the Children's Network, the Foster Kids program here in Southwest Florida. So please plan on joining us from 4.30 to 6.30. It is probably some of the most delicious food I've ever had. Now, if you haven't registered, it's not that we require it, but it would be helpful so that the people know how many people are coming. Let Val know at ValLambOfGodChurch.net. You can find all the information in our newsletter as well as on the website. And in just a week, we will be hosting purple. Now, many of you know what that means. It means when red and blue come together, what color do we get? So we are going to come together and be able to have conversation about some very, very difficult topics. And what I want to share with you is that when our e-blast went out, Yes, it is virtual, but it's here, okay? We will be showing the movie here at Lamb of God. So please plan on joining us. If you haven't signed up yet, please let us know. And I do want you to know um, as far as where we're at with masks, everything will be in here next week. So we will separate people if you're concerned about that. Masks, of course, if you're comfortable wearing them. So we're gonna do our best to continue with the CDC recommendations. A week from today, Bishop Pedro Suarez will be joining us here for worship. He will lead the Eucharist as well as he will do a Q&A. He will be preaching as well. He'll do a Q&A immediately following worship. I invite all of you please to plan on attending. It's an important time, not only because of his visit, but there'll be a lot of information that is being shared. And now I'm going to pause because I am going to talk about masks. It's a subject that we all really don't care to talk about, and I know that many of us are tired of wearing them. But I do want to remind you of the policy here at Lamb of God. Once we get to 100 people, this is what the board decided, masks will be required in the spaces. So 100 is the number, and we'll ask everybody to wear masks. And the other part of it is when it comes to the concert, the same thing goes. We are asking people to mask up. Now people will say, well, really we didn't do that on Christmas Eve? And you know what? That's true. Because the staff made a decision that we were not going to be the mask police, okay? And we're not gonna do that at the concert either. We are asking people to please follow the CDC recommendations for other people and just to continue, you know, have a safe environment. But again, we're not going to be going around following people and telling you to mask up. So just a heads up on all of that. It is today, Epiphany Sunday, which is Three Kings Sunday as well. And it's the aha moment. And I want to move out of the way. I'm going to go this way as I watch myself on TV. And I want you to see what they left. Those of you who know the story of three kings, on the 12th day of Christmas, the kings come and they leave presents for children, especially in the Latin countries. The kids leave out hay and grass for the camels to eat. And then there's presents. Well, look what happened. We got this most beautiful rocking horse that appeared here at Lamb of God. Isn't it pretty? And I bet you know a child who would love this rocking horse. Well, first off, I want to thank Andy and Dottie Nichols for Nicholas, excuse Nicholas for the gift. Andy makes these horses and it is absolutely adorable. It is going to be auctioned off or raffled off, we're not sure which yet, at the comedy show when Al Ernst is here in February, okay? 
So start saving your dollars uh, or your raffle ticket money, but we will do one or the other. We're just not sure. And I thought I saw Andy. Can you just stand up so people can see you? So <laughs> thank you so much, so, so much. Um, on to speaking of concerts, it's around the corner, January 22nd, One Voice with Mark Sanders and Juliana Alfano. Juliana will be doing music from Karen Carpenter as she is the pre-show. She's the pre-show, so we want you to know that as well. The benefits and the proceeds go to the Children's Network, and we just happen to have a few of the people from the Children's Network here this morning with us. You will be hearing more about that, but I also want to let you know that they are going to be in the fellowship hall immediately after worship. Come join us for coffee and conversation to hear more about the Children's Network. Okay, those are all my announcements, but you know what? We always like to have a little bit of humor in our lives, right? Okay, so you know what I preached on last week? Does anybody remember what the phrase was? I hear it. It's not supposed to be this way. And you remember that cute little boy that I preached about? My grandson, right? I told you how smart he was last week. Well, that he gets it. He gets the whole thing right about God and the baby Jesus in the manger. Well, look what I got this week from my son. Here's what it says. The question the teacher asks, would you like to be at the first Christmas? He wrote, no. Three reasons why, because he has to travel, it's a crowded stable, and it's smelly. <laughs> yeah, just thought I'd share that bit with you this morning. Now let us begin to worship. <laughs> Our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. O God, on this day you revealed your Son to the nations by the leading of a star. Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives and bring us at last to the full vision of your glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Friends in Christ, good morning. It's a pleasure and nice to be with you at Lamb of God this morning. A reading from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, 
and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurse's arm. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice. Because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you, the wealth of the nations shall come to you. The multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels on Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of God, the word of life. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you, Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. As I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and shares in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become his servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boldness riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So that the church by the wisdom of God in its rich and variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of God, the word of life. reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, 
wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the child, the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please be seated. How many of you remember a show called I've Got a Secret? Oh yeah, there's a lot of people who remember that one. Well, it was a fun show, admittedly it was. But when I hear those words, I've got a secret, not only does it remind me of that television show, but usually the person that's saying it is like, I've got a secret. And they're dying to tell you the secret. Now that's what I think. So you have to tell me, what do you think? When somebody says to you, I've got a secret. You want to know it. Oh, yeah. Anybody else? You want to know what the secret is? You're gonna, that person's gonna tell it to them. Yep. And they've already, oh. <laughs> that's really good. I never thought about that one. They've already told it to somebody else. Yeah, th that I've got a secret phrase, it just, it triggers something in people. And you know what else? It's got characteristics. That word secret has characteristics ascribed to people. So there are all different kinds of secret keepers or not keepers, okay? For example, there's the blabbermouth. Anybody know a blabbermouth? <laughs> well, I happen to know a number of blabbermouths, and one is my eight-year-old grandson. That kid cannot keep a secret for anything. And, you know, he doesn't do it maliciously. And I think that that's what the difference is when one is a blabbermouth. They're just so excited that they just get out there. Okay? And I know because his father's the same way, and his father is 36 now. All right? Still blabs it right out there. So we all know blabbermouths. They just get that secret, and boom, they got to start. But I don't think it's malicious. Then there's the tattletale. Tattletale secret tellers, know any of those? They just can't wait. They just can't wait. And there's something behind that, that they want to tattle. They really just want to tattle, you know, and you got caught a tattletale if you ever let a secret go. Then there's the snitch. <laughs> Anybody know any snitches? I got a secret and I'm going to tell so you get in trouble. Yeah. It sounds childish, but, you know, adults do that too, okay? And then there's another kind of secret keeper, the clandestine secret keeper. You know any of those? Those are the ones who are malicious secret keepers. 
they have an ulterior motive surrounding them. Sound familiar? Whoever thought that there could be so many definitions of I've got a secret? Well, when we go to the biblical text today, guess who had a secret? No, Herod. Herod had a secret, didn't he? He did. But let me tell you, before we even get to Herod as a secret keeper, let's talk about those three kings. I don't want to burst your bubbles, but I'm going to. Because they really, those three kings need to be returned to their biblical roles. They really do. So what I'm saying to you this morning is there is no such thing as the three kings. It's true. It is true. It's not biblically written that there's three kings. And in fact, if you look at the history of the three kings, there was a man named the Venerable B.B., B.E., B.E., who in the 8th century wrote a thesis. Now, that's a big word, right? He wrote a thesis, and it was accepted because he felt that those three magi, magicians, really needed to be given more credit for what they did. And he felt that they came to share about a universal child, a universal Christ. So he wrote a thesis, and in that thesis, he gave them names. They are Tom, Melchior. Yep, those are the names that were given. So let's describe these three. Melchior. He's an old man with gray hair and white skin. And then there's Gaspar. Young man, no beard, ruddy complexion. And then there's Balthasar. Black man, heavy, heavy beard. They are a universal representation of the three who paid homage to this child, bringing gifts of gold, gold because it was worthy, a priceless gift to give to this child, frankincense as a spice that was holy and ascribed to divinity of this child, and then myrrh as a symbol of another spice in which to cover the body at death. And that is the story of the three kings and how they came to be. The reality, though, and this is where it says they need to get back to the biblical identity and their role instead of always looking at them in a Sunday school play, their role truly was to come and see this Christ child and follow the star. But along the way, they stopped to talk to Herod to find out where this child was. And we all know Herod was terrified of what was about to happen. So Herod secretly called them to him. There was no one else, we are told, present during that conversation. It was only Herod and the three men, the three magicians, the three wise men who were present. And Herod had a plan. And I think, doesn't say it in the text, that these wise men were pretty astute. After all, they were astrologers. They were wise and could probably read Herod's body language. Because when someone is not telling the truth or has an ulterior plan or a clandestine plan, they have certain body things that they let go. They talk too much. They don't meet the other people in the eye. They say, I, 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 way too much. And I believe that's probably what was happening in that conversation and that these three wise men already knew that this was a clandestine meeting and this was a secret that Herod was keeping so that this child would not become known. And they went, they left, and they found the child by continuing to follow the star. And when they entered, I don't want to bust your bubble again, 
the house, it says, wasn't the manger scene. They entered Mary's house, which tells us that maybe a year or two had already passed and Mary and Joseph were in a house and they came to the house and they gave witness to this toddler and they paid homage to this toddler. And they also knew that Herod had a plan and they weren't gonna follow it. So they went in a complete different direction. The interesting part about this whole story besides the secret keeping and now the secret that the wise men told was that these three pagans were the first one to set eyes on the Christ child. The first ones. And they are the ones who blabbed the secret around so that others knew that this child had been born. Because there's no doubt that they couldn't keep the secret. I've got a secret and I'm going to tell you what the secret is. And we know that because we are here today that someone had to blab the secret, right? I've got a secret. You see, sometimes it's okay to blab secrets. Sometimes it's okay to tell a story, much like they did on I've Got a Secret many years ago. Secret brought to you tonight by Green Whip, the whipped coffee mix with all the flavor richness of whipped cream from General Foods. From New York, here is I Got a Secret, starring Steve Allen. <laughs> Isn't that clever? <laughs> that kind of thing can replace talent, you know, if you have a lot of help. Well, good evening. Welcome, as I said, to our Christmas edition of I've Got a Secret. And now we want you to meet the Christmas edition of our panel. First, there's Betsy Palmer. Good evening. Then Bill Cullen. Then Des Meyerson. And Henry Morgan. All set to play the game, panel? Oh, boy, yes. Why not? Then we, may we have our first contestant, please. <laughs> Just make yourself comfortable right there, and would you tell us your name and where you're from? <laughs> My name is Norman Weiss, and I'm stationed at the Naval Air Station, Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. That's right. Panel Chief Petty Officer Weiss uh, has recently returned from a vacation, or leave, as we say in the trade, uh, which he spent in Italy and Greece. Uh, Chief, I understand that you're planning to make some other trips in the very near future, all at your own expense. There's a little hint for you, panel. Uh, where will you be going? I'll be going over to the Philippines, Hong Kong, Vietnam, South Korea, and Colombia, South America. That's a lot of ground to cover. May I ask if you're married? No, I'm not. I see. probably can't afford a wife doing all that traveling. <laughs> well, actually, Chief Weiss has a, an excellent reason for making these trips. And uh, I think it's quite appropriate, too, at this season of the year. Now, if you'll whisper your secret to me, Chief, we'll uh, find out why you are going to all these countries. Mm. Panel, the clue to Chief Petty Officer Weiss's secret concerns his reasons for uh, traveling to all these different countries. And we'll start the game this time with Betsy Palmer. You say reasons for the, uh, that you're going to be traveling. Uh, tell me, do I call you Chief Petty? Chief. <laughs> I don't know. Just Petty. You don't know him that well, I don't know. Chief, yes. Chief Weiss, uh, does this have to do with children by any chance? Yes. Now, many, many gentlemen in the services have started wonderful homes and things like that for children, uh, orphans and all. Uh, could you be soliciting orphans for a home of some sort? Soliciting orphans? Well, Not exactly. I mean, that no. sounds a little weird, but I mean, getting, gathering boys and girls 
to to give them homes or families or. Well, you're in. I'm in the I'm in the category. In the area, yes. Well, does it have to do with children? Yes. That you're going to be bringing back from those countries? No. You're going to do something for them in those countries? Yes. All right. Uh, well, our buzzer's just broken, but uh, the we'll... Is broken. <laughs> I could go on and on. Goodness. Welcome to I Lost a Buzzer, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Uh, we'll go arbitrarily after $20 to Bill Cullen. Uh, uh, very appropriate this time of the year, our new theme song, Jingle Buzzers. Uh, uh, Chief, uh, is it possible that you have adopted, uh, as you do, uh, you know, these days, children in each one of those countries? You have... Uh, Figured it out, all right. Uh, Pamela, I suppose the best way to tell you about Chief Weiss's uh, secret, which you've already figured out anyway here, is to uh, show you this picture of his family. These are the ten foster children from all over the world whom Chief Weiss has adopted and whom he supports out of his Navy salary. There's always time to tell a secret, right? <laughs> There's always time to blab, especially when you're doing the ministry that the three kings witnessed years ago. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, please stand. <laughs> Sorry about that. And please join me as together we say the creed. I believe in God the Father, who from the heavens God created, sent the Son to save God's fallen world. I believe in Jesus Christ, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, announced by angels, worshiped by shepherds and wise men who live to suffer, die, rise again, to free me from the power of sin and death. I believe in the Holy Spirit, who has brought me to faith in the Christ, and by whose continual work in my heart, I am ever led to lay before the cradle of the Christ my worship, my life, and my love, so that I might live with him and serve him both now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The prayers of the people, joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of wanderers, you sent the Magi from afar to witness the mystery and majesty of your birth. Send us into the world, your will in our hearts and our lips. Merciful God, you created you created heaven and earth through your spirit and all your encompassing love over this cosmos. Bless the stars that guide our way in the night sky that invites the earth into slumber. Merciful God, you sent the Magi to follow the star into the uncertain future. 
May all leaders and people seek your face, especially when paths are not clear, conflicts rage, tyrants oppress, and fear abounds. May you surround those who are uncertain or suffering in your embrace, especially Ellie, John, Marion, Jerry, Jennifer, Lexi, Paul, Ann, Larry, Pat, Marcel, Sean, Carol, Noreen, Lonnie, George, Macy, Andrew, Jeremy, Lisa, Walter, Nicole, Larry, Jeff, and Camelia. Merciful Lord, you sent your spirit to dwell with Paul in prison. Send your spirit to those who are imprisoned and enslaved. Give courage and wisdom for building roads that lead to justice and freedom. Merciful God, you sent the Holy Family to seek safety in a new land. Protect all who make similar journeys. Send your guiding spirit to asylum seekers, refugees, and all who have journeyed towards safety. Merciful God, your glory is shown to the saints. We give thanks for those whose earthly journey has ended and now dwell with you forever. Give us signs of your continual presence until that day when we arise in you. Merciful God, rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share that peace with one another. At this time, I would like to just take a minute to introduce you to Nadere Salim. She is the Chief Executive Officer of the Children's Network, and she is here with us to share a little bit about the program and the excitement that we feel about being part of it, and then she will be with us after worship today. Nadere. Good morning, everyone. Oh, that was loud, I apologize. Um, anyway, um, so I am with Children's Network and Children's Network has had the honor of serving our community for 19 years. Um, our primary function is that we take care of abused children, primarily either in their own home or in foster homes or in the home of relatives, grandparents, aunts and uncles, and we adopt children who need a forever home. So um, we cannot do this work without our community and of utmost importance is our faith community. So um, again, thank you for allowing us to come here and tell you how each and every one of you can help. Uh, one of the primary ways is to support the concert, please. Um, as you heard uh, Pastor mention, 
the proceeds from the concert will go to help us take care of these kids. Um, we have about 2,500 kids that we're responsible for, and those kids are in five counties, but primarily Lee County, which has about 1,400 kids that have been abused and are in our care. So, um, you know, the community can play a role in many, many ways, right? You can volunteer your time with us, you can foster, become a foster parent, or adopt children or spread the word that there is a need for foster and adoptive parents in our community. And you can also mentor a young parent. Um, so today, if you stay with us, you'll hear more about that. There's a great need for role models, positive role models to help our young parents who have really no background or training for how to parent their children. And as a result, those kids are neglected or abused and come into our care. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to thank the pastor again. I want to thank you all. Uh, please help spread the word about the concert. Um, it goes to a great cause. And God bless you. Do stay to listen because I want to share with you, I've, I've already signed up to be a mentor for parents, for young parents. I, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, you wonder when you get to our age, what can I do? What can I do? Because I, you know, don't want to adopt a child at this age or I think I'm too old for all of that. But mentoring parents, yeah. To use a phrase that I can say, and I think you'll remember it, I get it. Been there, been there. So um, I know we're waiting for Rose to come in. Is she not coming in? They are coming in. We just don't know where Rose is. So she'll be here. I've seen her. But we are going to bring this a little closer. Now, Andy, she can get in it. She's five, four, five. Okay, if she wants. Wait till she sees this. Come on in. Come on. Good morning, Rose. Again. How are you? What you do today? Gifts for Jesus by Rose. I don't know if you can get this shot. My it is really cute. Can you tell me about those? A house. I think he needs a house, right? And what's all this down here? What is it? Sorry, I'm not understanding her. Ladders. Okay. Everybody needs a good ladder, right? Oh, this is the ladder. Okay. Oh, that's the slide. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think we can show it on the screen. You want to see yourself up there? Isn't that cute? Well, you know what else happened this week? Look what appeared here at Lamb of God. You know who brought that? Well... We have a lovely, kind family here that donated that. You want to try it? You don't? Do you want to look at the seat inside? Okay, come here. Isn't that cool? You want me to hold it? You want to get in? Okay. Isn't that cute? Is it fun? Can you show me how it rocks? Look at it. It's got handles there too. Whoa, isn't that cute? I really like it. Well, that was a gift. It was a gift given to Lamb of God so that we can share that gift with a little boy or a little girl one day in the not too distant future. And it's special because today is Three Kings Day. Do you know what that is? What? Oh, okay. So let me tell you about these guys. These were the wise men that followed a star and saw baby Jesus. And today we're celebrating that they saw baby Jesus first. And you get gifts on that day. Like today we got this gift and that we're going to share it with other people because that's what happens when you see the baby Jesus, right? Okay, well, thank you. And this is going to be here for a while. So you can rock as often as you want and see that man right over there. If you want to turn all the way around. Pink shirt. And his wife, they're the ones that gave it to us. He made it. 
he made it. So, all right, so let's pray. Dear God, thank you for today when three men followed a star and told us a secret that lives on in your son. Amen. Thanks for coming up, Rose. I appreciate it. Let me help you out there. Well done. Thank you. Here you go, sweetie. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for the gifts that we receive, gifts that enable and empower your people to serve your people. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
a secret. This is the way that the Lord made for all of us. Let us pray together with the words that he has given us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Come to the banquet for all is now ready. Please be seated. This is the body of Christ given for you, and this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand. Let us pray. Radiant God, with our eyes we have seen your salvation, and in this meal we have feasted on your grace. May your word take flesh in us that we may be your holy people, revealing your glory made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. reminders 
first, which I forgot to tell you, that Mark Sanders will be leading worship with us next week, along with the choir and Juliana. You won't want to miss that. And in addition, don't forget to stop off in the fellowship hall. Now go in peace. Christ is with you. Hi, everybody. See you.